forces and it's not the Star Wars kind sorry so lesson one different kinds of forces all right and first off what is a force a force is going to be a push or a pull basically that push or pull uh, you're either pushing something somewhere or you're pulling it another way that's pretty much what a force is and forces are the scalar of vectors well if you're pushing something you're probably going some direction if you're pulling something you're again pulling some direction so forces are vectors all right so they're gonna have a magnitude that's gonna be how hard you push how much strength how much power is going on in that push and then the direction of course is which direction you're pushing up and down and left and right all right now we go list through the different kinds of forces force of gravity and we're gonna abbreviate force of gravity as a little g right because the little g reminds us of the little g being the acceleration of gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared. All right, and so this little g down there is the force of gravity. And the direction that gravity acts is always down, directly down. So if you're on a hill, standing there, whoo do 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 right, the force of gravity is straight down. All right, that's where the middle of the Earth is, okay? And the force of gravity is not equal to that. This is, if you remember, meters per second squared. That's an acceleration. So, so the force of gravity is the thing that's going to cause that acceleration. It's not actually acceleration. So the force of gravity is not 9.8. Okay, It's what's going to cause the 9.8 to happen. Another name for force of gravity is weight. W-E-I-G-H-T. Yay, okay, your weight. Right? It turns out that if you measure your mass in pounds, well, it's not your mass, sorry. If you measure yourself in pounds, right, that would be a weight. Uh, the metric force of weight is going to be called a newton. Now, friction. Friction all right, is caused by two objects touching each other. All right, and uh, so if you have one object just all by itself, this rock here, there's no friction going on have to have something touching something else. And it has to do with the van der Waals interactions. We're not getting into that. You might remember it from chemistry. But bottom line, two things touching to each other. All right, That's going to be our friction. And now here's the thing. If you are, say, moving one direction, then friction is going to be opposite that. All right, And we're going to call that the, the kinetic friction or the sliding friction. All right, and so that is opposite the way you're going. However, if you're just sitting still and some, some force is pulling one way, right, and you're not moving, if you're stopped, then friction will be the opposite the direction you're being pulled. Okay, so it's, it's either the opposite direction you're going or it's opposite basically all the other forces. It's the thing that keeps you from moving, all right, when you're stopped. Okay, so you pull on something, it's not moving, it's usually stuck because of friction. All right, and that only happens when two things are touching. Okay, air resistance, okay? We have ignored air for a long time, and we're going to take into account a little bit here. The force of air, what causes the force of air is that the little tiny atoms of the air, right, as you're going forward, they are flowing over and around you, okay? They're bumping into you as you go. All right, and so as you're moving forward, the air bumps into you, and that bumping into you slows you down. Uh, you can talk about it. It's sort of like a friction of traveling through the air, but it's not actually friction. There's no two surfaces touching. So you can think of it a little bit like that, but it's really the air molecules bumping into something. And so the faster something goes, the more the air molecules bump and the more air resistance happens. The fatter that something is, the more atoms bump into it, and again, the higher air resistance it has. Now, the direction of air resistance is always going to be, again, this one is going to be opposite the direction of motion again. If you're headed this way, air resistance will always be opposite that. There's no exceptions. It's going to be opposite the way you're headed in the air. Okay. Now, can you have uh, an inanimate object exert a force? Let's say you have a table. Can a table cause a force? And yes, it can. All right. One of the most common ones is the normal force. And the normal means perpendicular. That's what normal means. Normal. 
it's a math term for a right angle. All right. So the normal force happens when you've got a surface, do, 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 and then there's something on it. And the normal force is if that surface is pushing on the object. So if it's flat, the normal force would push it straight up. But you can have a normal force on a hill. So if you have a rock on the hill, the normal force on the hill, again, is perpendicular up. Right? It makes a right angle with the surface. So it is perpendicular to whatever surface you have, all right, the normal force. So if I draw it like this, the normal force would be out like that. If I have a flat surface, the normal force would be out like that, and so on and so forth. So f of n is always, the direction of f of n is always perpendicular to the surface that is causing the force, okay? A hill can't push you down, right? A hill can't push you up the hill, right? It only pushes out of the hill. All right, tension, tension. All right, tension is usually along a rope or a chain, basically. Some kind of rope or chain thing. And the thing about tension, it's just another way to label some things. The thing about a tension is that you, you can't push with it. All right, the force of tension is not ever going to be a push. You can only pull with it uh, and you just pull it whatever direction it is. All right, so the direction, let's see what direction is the object compared to the thing that caused the force, right? So uh, the force of tension, right, is along the rope. So wherever the rope is, you have something, you've got a rope going, the tension force will be along that rope, okay? It'll be down the path of the rope or a chain or whatever it is, all right? Last one, the applied force, also known as FAP, okay? And this is just everything. This is everything, okay? Everything. I can almost write with my mouse, okay? Everything, okay? So if we don't have a name for it, we call it an applied force, all right? You, you are dragging a rock, right? Here's the rock, right? Well, maybe it could be tension if it's a rope. Let's say you're pushing a rock. There you are, you're pushing a rock. There you are, pushing a rock. That's an applied force, all right? You got a rocket engine. All right, and it's got engines going on, and there's gas coming out of it, stuff like that. It has got an applied force on the rocket. Okay, if it's not one of the others, if it's not a, if it's not a tension, it's not a, a normal force, if it's not air resistance, it's not friction, if it's not force of gravity, right? Then it is an applied force. Okay, it's basically everything else.